Hello Astrotometry. This is a comment uh, response primarily to Piero 314. We've been discussing the nature of light and the travel that light would have to take through the cosmos. And the oldest light that we see we suppose is 14 billion years old. And if you think about how far 14 billion light years is, that's an incredible distance. And this distance that we believe that this light traveled is based on something called the Doppler effect. It's based on the mechanics of light. It's not that we can actually measure, like send something out 14.7 billion years and say, hey, I'm out here, um, look what I found. Um, that's not really the way things are working. And if you imagine the uh, gravity that a, a, a an individual light ray, an individual photon, which is a theoretical particle, by the way, um, would experience as it was traveling through uh, space-time um, past all of the numerous stars that exist in outer space on its way um, here uh, to Earth. Um, that is a lot of gravity. That is a lot of movement. It's a lot of manipulation. And the general theory of relativity supposes that there might be something that's massive enough so that if light was traveling away from it, that it would actually be pulled directly back. Something that would actually uh, not allow any light to escape. Something that's that massive. You can't say that something like that could exist and simultaneously say that the gravity from all of the stars that we know are out there, or all the, the stars that we think are out there, um, wouldn't affect that light similarly. It's ridiculous to suppose that a black hole could uh, accelerate light at uh, 386,000 miles per second towards it, that, uh, put that kind, of, that kind of acceleration on a photon, but yet that same photon wouldn't orbit that black hole. Or that that same photon wouldn't orbit its own sun, wouldn't orbit something that's emitted from at a far enough distance, at a, at a sufficient distance. And this is, this is absolutely ludicrous. It's absolutely contradictory to what science is about. And it's something that Einstein missed. He just didn't think about it. And we just didn't think about it because of the way we think about space because of the way we think about time. It's not something that is obvious. It's one of these subtle facts about the nature of the universe. And this is something that I discovered. This isn't something that I read somewhere. This isn't something that the establishment has peer-reviewed. They haven't. Nobody's, nobody's really considered this. And, and the, the, the people that are uh, astronomers that I've, that I've mentioned this to, they just, like, they just like turn away. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to deal with it. And, you know, it's just, it's that kind of thing. And it's, it's, it's someday we're going to have, they are going to have to deal with it. I'm dealing with it now. This is an image of the Sombrero Galaxy taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. Now, the theory is that the stars that are on the far side of this galaxy are emitting light and that this light travels through, in some cases, and around the stars that are nearer to the Earth, and that this light is somehow not affected by that, those stars and, and the, the journey all the way across that galaxy. And now for some reason, most people seem to be pretty ignorant about the nature of gravity. And they think about, you know, you just go up into orbit and then all of a sudden there's no gravity. Well, that's not true. When you're in orbit around the Earth, you're falling at the same rate as the gravitational acceleration. In other words, the gravity isn't gone. It's just that you're moving fast enough so that you're, you are compensating for the speed that you are falling through the curved space-time. It doesn't, gravity doesn't just go away when you get into orbit. Some people think, oh, I'm in orbit, now I can just go wherever I want in outer, outer space. That's not true. If you're headed towards the moon, for example, most people think that once you're in orbit, you just, you just pop over to the moon. No, it's 166,000 miles to the first Lagrange point. In other words, in order, to, in order to get to the point where the gravity from the moon 
is compensating for the gravity from the, from the Earth, you go to the first Lagrange point, which is 166,000 miles that you have to push, you have to accelerate away from the Earth. Now the Sun is more than 300,000 times more massive than the Earth. By disrespecting the gravity that the, the stars, as, as in our star, uh, would have on a light ray that's leaving it, and simultaneously supposing that there might be an object out there, this black hole, that uh, pulls so hard that it would pull a light ray back in from the same direction that it's leaving, is uh, a double standard. It's a contradiction in, in your rationale. It's irrational. It's illogical to say that, yes, gravity bends light. Uh, yes, we think there's these big uh, gravitational sinkholes all over outer space, these stars. But when light travels 4.7 billion light years, it travels directly from one point to another, and it's only bent um, a tiny, tiny fraction, and, and it's not even measurable. That's ridiculous.